Okay. I don't know which uh, video up is going to upload first, this or that. Um, it's nighttime now, obviously. Heading into the city, about to get on to the Eisenhower. So I don't know which video is going to upload first. Um, having said what I said about Protestants and feeling bad for them and that they're starving. Um, praying three times a day, making the sign of the cross, um, facing east, facing east, and saying at least the Lord's Prayer three times a day. Um, or you can also, well, I guess facing Damascus or Jerusalem would still be facing east. Um, fasting Wednesdays and Fridays by abstaining from certain foods like meats, at least, or at least land-based meats, if not all meats, if not all animal products, um, Wednesdays and Fridays, or maybe at least Fridays. Um, I don't see the objection to these. And to say that they're empty rituals, um, rituals are rarely empty. And taking time out of your day, trust someone from an ex. This is the power of Islam, too. This is the true power. This is power. When you say, oh, it's time right now, I've got to pray. You wake up in the morning, you go, whoop, the first thing I do is do wudu and then pray. And you do that with your family. Everybody in the house does that. And then um, noon, right? Let's, but I'm, let, let me put this in a Christian context. Noon, um, since Muslims technically will never pray when the sun is just rising, when the sun is exactly high in the sky and when the sun is just setting. But the Christians do. Um, but when you're with people, friends, no matter what you're doing, boom, when that time comes for prayer, you guys stop, you face the direction, and you pray. And somebody usually leads the most knowledgeable or the most learned or whatever. Um, now, the fact that Christianity had that, that in the morning, the father leads the, the his wife and children in prayer. During the day, if the father's not home, if he's out working, the mother leads the children in prayer. At night, or at sunset, whichever, um, the father leads the children in prayer. In the middle of the day, when you're out, um, stop when you hear the tolling of the bell or the banging of the gong and you you stand and you face east and you recite the Lord's Prayer making the sign of the cross glorifying the Trinity it's called the Trusian Prayer so there's a little more than um, just the Lord's Prayer and the Trusian but that's essentially it the Lord be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, as well as the Lord's Prayer preceding it. Amen. That power binds, and when you build up a continual recitation life like that, not just um, silent prayer, but communal prayer, right? Communal worship. Not necessarily prayer, but communal worship. Pray to God with your own private concerns in your prayer corner or whatever. But when it's communal, collective, and you're not making a show of yourself. You're, you're not saying how holy you are. You are just reciting. You're not going into... It's not your own words. These are the words of how we were told to pray by Christ himself. That is extremely powerful. 
making the sign of the cross is usually mocked in American TV shows um, when they're trying to have a stereotypical Mexican character. Um, I make the sign of the cross every single time I go past cemeteries, every time um, an ambulance has its lights on and goes past me. Anytime I hear of a death, and there are people who find it irritating or think it's comical. But communities that actually have this built into them, when waves of, when met with Islam, atheism, feminism, anarchy, communism, um, hatred of the family things like that these strengthen us these, these actually have strengthened us built a, a walls of protection certain days of fa collectively fasting which nobody does anymore apparently except the orthodox um, fasting Wednesdays and Fridays in remembrance praying three times a day making the sign of the cross. These are the bind, these, these will protect us. Why is Islam so strong? The, this, it is the fasting, the holding to reciting what they believe five times a day. In the case of the Shia, I think they blend um, the prayer so that there's actually three. The Quran actually says to pray three times a day, but they pray five, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, even little things, saying Alhamdulillah, you know, things like that. Uh, they're what people think are ridiculous, the ticks, you know, um, you know, Astaghfirullah, all that stuff. That ingrains in you, you are a Muslim. With a Christian, you want a Christian life, you want to make Christian men and women who are always remembering their virtues and have continual prayer of the heart. We're not Gnostics. We need this. We are physical beings living in a physical world. If these don't matter, then I would then why not go have sex with as many people as you can and use as much cocaine and as much heroin as possible. Just physical doesn't matter, right? Oh, it's only things that, abstaining from things, that's the only important thing, except when it's fasting. People fail to see how vital, not people, the church, leaders in the Western church, and I don't even think it's that, especially with Vatican II. I actually do believe the Catholic Church was infiltrated. Um, although I'm not a Seti Vacantist, um, because I think the church had already been broken away. But Vatican II was, was, was not, there was no good intention in Vatican II. Maybe there was at the beginning of the council, but by the end of it, um, the reforms that had been made were so abominable that I don't think, I don't think people could have. And still, the Roman Catholic Church is miles better, uh, miles above the uh, the Protestants. Peace to you.